Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're feeling strong, positive, and optimistic as always. Um, I'm doing a bit of traveling. I'm currently in beautiful, sunny Germany. Um, and in this video, I'm gonna take you through which G-Shocks I've taken with me traveling, um, why I take, took them. I'm also then going to show you an amazing um, gym situation that I've, uh, I guess, a, a gym setup that I've made at my in-laws over in Germany. And um, I think you're going to be knocked out. It's the best gym I've ever had in my life. Very exciting. Now, I'm also going to take you through one mistake I met, made when actually selecting my G-Shocks. Bit of a faux pas. And I think you will, uh, most of you will understand what I've, what I've done there. And uh, yeah, so let's get into it. Now, I have this beautiful watch, which you'll know as the GPW 2000, the Gravity Master. Um first and foremost out of this pouch because I want to explain that when I get on the on the plane um, and I'm traveling through time zones and I might be a little bit jet lagged a little bit tired this watch is always the one to, to have in my opinion it's incredibly um, good at basically knowing where it is uh, you have multiple ways of uh, of making sure that the watch is accurate in terms of the time and location it has uh, the Bluetooth G-Shock connected app uh, functionality. It has multiple uh, world times, as you can imagine. It also has the multiband six, and it also has satellite receiving options as well. So there's basically four different ways that this watch can make sure it knows where you are and make sure you're receiving the right time. Now, one of the things I really like about this, which I use multiple times when I was traveling, um, is that down here, you've got a small dial which shows a time, and then obviously you've got the main dial. Now, if you hold down this button, which is normally the light button, one, two, three, you'll see the main dial changes to quarter past three, and this dial changes to quarter past two. If I press that again, it reverses. And what's that? what that is simply doing is, um, switching between the destination that you're going to and the destination that you've left. You can set that either manually using this crown or you can um, do it via the G-Shock connected, connected app. I always do it via the G-Shock connected app because I find it so easy, intuitive and instant. Um, but yeah, it's just really handy. So the second that you land, you just, you just press that button and you know that your watch is gonna be saying the right time. And then if you just suddenly think, what time is it back, back where I came from? Maybe you're wondering, um, you know, uh, what time it is for people that you've um, been spending some time with, if you're gonna contact them, you know immediately by just looking down at this small dial right down there. So that's one of the main reasons why this watch is just a perfect travel companion. And I've put a video um, on the channel previously about why it's the perfect travel companion. There's many other reasons, but yes, those four ways in which it tells the time and location, plus, that very easy way of switching to um, the world time. Now, the other thing about this watch, and I'm just going to hold down the bottom left for three seconds. That double beat means that it'll go back to the, the normal. Um, there you go. And it's back to just normal home screen, day, date, and time. Now, I also want to make sure that, okay. Now, another reason why this watch is really, really handy is that when you are traveling, well, personally, when I'm traveling, I find that you can be in a hotel or in, even in my in-law's house sometimes, um, in a room that you don't know, and in the middle of the night, you might have to get up, um, and it's dark. You don't know, remember where, remember where all the light switches are, and basically this light, the same button actually, you can see this is broad daylight and you can see down here, the bottom left, at about the seven o'clock mark, 7.30 mark. In broad daylight, you can see that light, the super illuminator. And that comes on um, and it literally lights up the room. I'm not exaggerating. I'm gonna actually show you, I'm gonna superimpose a video now of, of it lighting up the room that I took previously um, on this holiday, just to, just to prove how powerful it is. And I'm not kidding, even when the light goes off, it illuminates the, the face so much that it's, it's damn bright. I'm not saying that, 
that after the light goes off, it illuminates the room, but it's so bright that um, it can actually keep you awake if you, if you don't have the watch um, kind of face down or something. So honestly, the past few nights, I've been keeping this watch on my wrist when I sleep, which isn't necessarily perfect because ideal because it's such a big bulky watch. Um, you know, you, you might have a little bit of discomfort. I actually haven't felt that. But, uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's basically just a torch on my arm for in the middle of the night if I can't find the light switch and uh, don't want to be tripping over things. You know what it's like when you travel. You've got, you've got suitcases lying around and you've got bits and pieces that you, just, um, that you might trip over in the dark. This eradicates all that. Uh, wonderful. Wonderful watch. That is always going to be with me when I travel. Now, let's open up this and see what else we've got. This is the pouch I use to take my G-Shocks when I'm traveling. Okay. Next. This. I've, uh, I've used it so many times already. I've been traveling for about a week and a half. And the G9300 Mudman. Look at it. Battle scarred. It's, um... It's got these scratches here. I've had it for, I think it's 12 years now. I keep on meaning to double check the actual code on it on the back to, to work out exactly when it was made. You can see it's not the, the cleanest of watches. It's covered in salt from a lot of salt water swimming um, and a lot of workouts and things like this, but it is absolutely perfect. It still works just like good as new. Um, and whenever I'm doing a lot of workouts outside at the moment, I always have this on my person. Um, the fact that it's got that compass on there is actually really handy. You know, when you go out running and you don't know exactly where you are or you don't know the place too well, it's always good to have a rough bearing so that if you head off in one direction, you can always get back um, by following the compass. I'm a massive fan of compasses on G-Shocks and... This is why this watch has come with me. It's the one of two watches that have a compass, which I've taken. I think it's fair to say that um, this is this is one of my favorites of all time and it will always go with me wherever I am. I also find the comfort factor of this, this thing is incredible. Um, it sits on my wrist personally so well. I'll put it on for you so you can see. just sits really nicely um, and yeah I think it looks great as well it's also got the moon phase which is always an interesting extra perk don't use it a lot but it's interesting it's um, it's tough solar so you can see here I've got medium medium charge on it right now um, it's never given me any issues in terms of uh, you know running out of battery and, and not being charging. So after 12 years, it's fair to say that these things last very well in that respect as well. As always with my watches, um, you know, I use them properly. I beat them up a bit. I don't clean them as much as uh, I probably should. You can see the suntan lotion in here. You can see the fact that it's basically um, used, used for what it's designed for. But also, it's doing damn well. You can actually see a lot of... Uh, to treat us there which is again just salt buildup. I've been in the sea quite a lot recently and in lakes um, doing some cold water swimming as well so so yeah that's the second watch that will always be with me when I travel. Now the next one you probably would have guessed that this was uh, on the list you know I'm a massive fan of the GWG 1000 the Mudmaster um, this is like the beast, this is the tank, the zombie apocalypse watch, and uh, honestly, uh, because I'm planning to do a little bit of um, camping and hiking uh, next week, that's what this has come with me for. I haven't used it yet, it will be um, coming out next week, and it's simply because it's the one which, you know, it's, it's tough solar, it's got a fantastically uh, clear compass, um, which is the... the second hand is the points north I really like that function um, easier to see than the compass on the uh, on the mudman 
and therefore I'm, I'm just a little bit more reliant on it personally. Um, it's got a decent light at the bottom, not nearly as powerful as the, the Gravity Masters Super Illuminator, but it's still very good. Um, if I hold the bottom left button, or the C button, you can see after a couple of seconds it blinks, and then it goes M, that shows that it's medium charge. So this has been for, let's say, two weeks, this has been in this pouch, not come out whatsoever, and uh, it's still got medium charge, so it hasn't been it hasn't been charged at all, but it still hold medium, hold medium because I've got the power save mode on, so it's kind of um, shutting itself down somewhat after it hasn't been used. Um, you can see the solar, the solar cell across the top here, that kind of lattice work design, and across the bottom, in those those areas, uh, it's just a piece of class, and this thing isn't going to break. This one, this thing's going to go forever. The strap is incredibly strong. Um, you know, you'll see in my previous videos, it's not necessarily the most comfortable watch. It's got some relatively um, kind of protruding edges around here, which mean that compared to, say, for example, the GGB100, Mudmaster, it's not quite as uh, comfortable on the wrist with that carbon core um, back. But I don't care. This is, this is always going to be a go-to for me when I'm doing something that's a little bit more extreme, a little bit more, uh, let's say, um, heavy on the, uh, for potential for, for, for damage or, uh, you know, um, being knocked about. You can see around the light here, you can see bits and pieces where it's been hit. I've now had this for, I think, seven years. Uh, I've worn it regularly. I think it's got good use um, all year round for each of those seven years, seven and a half years. And I just can't knock it or question it. There's some nice up close, clear, clear images of the the bezel. You can see, you know, they've got like a fine patina. I don't know if you never, if you ever noticed on a sports car, if you go up to an old Porsche or something. In my opinion, it's nicer when they've got their original paint and they've just got but these like little um, nicks and uh, slight wear to the, the paint and that's what that's how I see these these G-Shocks develop the same kind of pattern it's not that they look grotty or um, untidy it's just that they've like aged well like a fine wine and that's what I uh, oh look I've got a tiny spider just jumped on it's digging the mudman but yeah it's it's just like a fine wine as I was saying and um, you know it's doing what it was designed for which is Hard work, put up with some pretty uh, tough circumstances and never misses a beat. Wonderful watch. So that's number three. Number four, GA2100, the grey. The code is, I'm never great at remembering all the individual codes, GA2110ET. So not 2100, GA2110ET. Earth tone, the grey. So... You can see there's a slight dark grey here compared to the the rear bezel and the and the um, strap itself. Also, there's got a grey matching buckle on the strap as well. That's that's the 2100 model, the Earth Tone. Honestly, uh, in the three or so months that I've owned this watch, it's hardly come off my wrist. Admittedly, I've been at work <clears throat> and um, wearing a suit, and I've got the yellow, the blue earth tone, the blue grey earth tone, the two triple blacks, and this. I think that's everything. Oh no, and I've also got the um the ghost, the uh the crisp the, the transparent version. And honestly, this is the version that I just find so versatile in terms of how it looks. Um you know if you watch my channel, I'm a massive fan of the GA twenty one hundred, the trend GA twenty one ten series in general. And it's fair to say that um, th th there's one always about my person. Uh, I, I'm wearing this so that if I go into town, go to a nice restaurant, go out with friends or family, I've got something that's a little bit less, um, let's say, tactical looking, uh, but still solid and still, of course, highly reliable. Now, interestingly, I do also opt to wear this Gravity Master when it's... Um, 
smart casual. It's a little bit too, not too, it's a little bit overly sized, one might say, um, to wear with a shirt or something. But honestly, with a thicker wrist, it actually looks fine. I'll show you a quick comparison. So here is the GA2110 on the wrist. And for me, it's just it's just really well balanced. It's uh, there's some very interesting new news from Casio about Casio about the GA series. There's a metal one, metal series coming out. I really like the blue and the green versions, and also the uh, Hidden Coast. I really like a couple of those colours. Let's just do that quick comparison of the size, and you can see how the Gravity Master looks. The GPW two thousand. You see, it looks it looks big, but it doesn't. It's not like in your face. It's not black, by the way. It's a like an olive drab color, which I think is great. Super cool. It's got these um, carbon fiber highlights as well around here. Uh, but yeah, I'm more than happy to wear, comfortable wearing that in a smart casual environment as well. It works. It's fine. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, so there's four G-Shocks, which I've traveled with. Now, is there another one? The honest answer is no. Now, there's two things I can say about that. One is that if I was wearing any more, if I was carrying any more G-Shocks on a tr on a trip like this, which is going to be out about three weeks, I uh, it would be overkill. I don't I don't need more. I always try to pack as light as possible, but I like the versatility of having different types of watches with me. Um, also. There's always a chance I'm going to pick up another one when I'm traveling. The interesting thing with G-Shocks and Casio is that different parts of the world <coughs> show um, sell different models of G-Shock. And when I'm in Germany, you know, I'm sure I'll come across some something that I haven't seen in the UK recently, for example. Um, and yeah, so I'm looking out for that. The other thing is that I actually made a mistake. I didn't bring a specific watch that I wish I now had. A G Shock. Can you guess what it is? I'll give you three seconds to guess. One, two, three. GG B100 Mudmaster. So, as you know, I've got the olive version of that watch. I'm a big fan. It's super comfortable. It's the carbon core. Um, it's very different to this. I've often said this is actually a very different watch to the to the GG B100. I'm not sure why they have the same name. They're just completely completely different watches. Really, both fantastic. Now, the reason why I'm a little bit annoyed with myself for not bringing the GGB100 with me on my travels is that it, ha it has the location in indicator function. And what that means is basically, in the same way that the, uh, the, GA the GWG1000 um, points into north with its, with its second hand there when you activate the compass, the GGB100, you have a setting where you can be at a location, you can set it as your kind of waypoint, then you can walk and via the G-Shock connected app, which has to be connected to via Bluetooth, the second hand will indicate where your waypoint is, no matter where you are. So basically, the reason why I really would have liked this is because um, I actually don't know the locations that I'm going to very well whatsoever. Say for example, I'm at the campsite next week, and I leave the campsite, go for a hike, it's always nice to have that backup that you watch via the app will know how to get back. Yes, I know you'll say, well, you've got Google Maps, you've got a physical map, you've got, you know, a normal compass, things like that. That's true. But it's just a nice la layer of backup. And also it's kind of like a no brainer. It's just easy. You just look at your watch, you select the location indicator, and it just tells you which direction to walk. You don't have to faff around with managing internet data when you're abroad and things like this you know uh i like keep keeping things simple and honestly that ggb 100 location indicator function is pretty simple there's some there's some areas where it can be improved for sure i wish you could set pre like kind of predetermined waypoints that you haven't visited yet for example um and i hope that improves in the in the future but it's super handy to take you back to your hq basically uh so yeah i didn't take it I should have took it, um, my mistake, uh, lesson learned, and next time I will. Okay, so there's the four 
G-Shocks I took with me on, on holiday. And now, as promised, I want to show you the amazing gym which I have in my in-laws place here in Germany. Let's take a look. So here we go. Walk over the garden. And here it is. <clears throat> so this is my new gym. It's a, what I assume is about a 20, it feels like about a 20, maybe 22 kilometer, uh, kilogram stone. Plus a lighter one here. Now I have been doing some pretty brutal workouts with this up and down the garden over the past few days and feeling great honestly i i um i'll film some in a second but essentially doing some squats some presses some walking lunges with this is as good as what you can do in a in a gym pretty much um and obviously this is absolutely free it might seem a little bit extreme but uh, actually, it's it's really good. It's the fact that it's not round and not perfectly shaped and a little bit rough around the edges means that you um, you know you've got to be extra. Uh, I guess you just got to think about. It. You work out a bit more, and it's not perfect, and that's what makes it actually help you get a different level of um, strength and awareness when you're working with it. So uh, so yeah, the gym for the next couple of weeks. Wow. So I'm just going to run through some of the uh, exercises I've done with this now infamous rock. Um, you know, one of the things here, I'm doing some walking lunges across the garden. Here, one of the things I find when I travel actually is that you tend not to sleep so well. You're not in your own bed. Um, you might be in, uh, you know, a bit of a cramped environment or somewhere where you're not just so comfortable and therefore if you're not sleeping so well, you can basically just feel a bit rough, and I find exercise is the the way to kind of normalize that. Uh, here, doing some slightly unusual press ups, just having that uh, that rock there on one of the one of the arms gives it that unbalance, which actually, for me, I find helps um, stabilize certain muscles, uh, get them used to working in imperfect environments, um, and yeah. So whenever I travel. I always simply try to keep my body moving, keep the blood blood flowing, and lift heavy things. I uh, I tend to suffer from, uh, let's say, anxiety or um, just not feeling myself unless I do something like lifting or running on a semi-regular basis. So this is critical for me. Um, I think I took a long time to realize that this is the kind of thing I need to do to to keep um, happy and stable. And yeah, I just thought I'd share that because um, I think a lot of guys, a lot of people, but a lot of guys uh, don't realize that they're designed for doing physical things and working out. And therefore when you travel and you don't have that op opportunity, you might start feeling a bit lousy because you haven't got an option to use up some energy or, um, get those endorphins running from the exercise. So yeah, just, I look to find anything that does the job. And a 20, 22 kilogram stone that I can throw around the garden at zero cost is pretty much perfect. Oh, you see, 10, 15 minutes with this. And, uh, you could have been in a, a gym you paid 75 pounds a month for membership but uh one man on his rock that's all you need let's get after it come on yeah i think i think a lot of people have the um tendency to think oh it's holiday I'm going to wind down, I'm going to relax, and obviously that's the right thing to do, but I don't necessarily think it's the healthiest thing to do to completely stop being active, purely overindulge and, uh, you know, turn off all your 
need for movement and exercise. I think that's counterproductive. I think now is the chance to recharge the batteries, but also just get your uh, body realigned with your mind and just generally feel a little bit more balanced. Certainly it takes me a few days when I am away from, uh, from work to get that balance back. And exercise is just one of those magic ways to do it. I don't think there's anything, well, I know there's not for me anything as effective as getting the heart rate up, lifting heavy things, and generally pushing it and getting after it. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching as always, and look forward to speaking to you on the next one. Take care. Cheers.